Welcome to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. So let's talk about all of the Easter eggs in The Boys, episode three. Fucking diabolical. First of all, I'm sorry this video is so late. I know episode four will be out by the time that most of you see this video, so I'm gonna hold off on all of my usual theories and predictions and stick to just straight up Easter eggs. The title of the episode is Over the Hill with the Swords of a Thousand Men, the name of an arc from the comics from issues 60 to 65. Huey is still watching the Billy Joel music video for Your Only Human. The song is about allowing yourself to make mistakes because, after all, you're only human. The subtext here is that Huey and the others are hunting superhumans while they themselves are only human. Or are they dancing? Part of Mallory's research includes a Budweiser ad featuring a soup named Liberty, who you'll remember was also featured in a perfume ad in the previous episode. Now, Liberty is not in the comics, so it's a total mystery how she's gonna feature into the story, but I got a couple theories that I'll tell you in a minute. Probably not a coincidence that we're learning more about Vought's ties to World War II at the same time a vintage World War II ad is showing up in the show. Also, check out the address on the back of this clipping. Now expect that to come into play in a future episode. At the club, notice that A-Train's entourage are all wearing A-Train branded jumpsuits. And when he exits the club, you can see Saving America, the Homelander approved motto for Vought's operations overseas on the side of this bus. The director is pitching an origin movie called Dawn of the Seven, a play on Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice. He's wearing a Fassbender Metallica shirt. And I guess this is a good time to point out how the boys helps define their characters' personalities by what music they enjoy. Milk Toast Huey is into easy listening rock like Billy Joel and James Taylor, while Mother's Milk is always wearing a vintage hip hop tee from groups like Wu Tang and Public Enemy. Now it's interesting that Mother's Milk is almost always wearing a group shirt, while Huey favors solo artists, maybe indicating MM's willingness to be a part of a team, but Huey is still more of a loner. All right, back to this guy's pitch. I could be wrong, but the storyboards look like the art of Boys co creator Derek Robertson. Lynn Moel Miranda gets a name drop and they take a dig at Hamilton's popularity. I love Hamilton! The world loves Hamilton! Oh my god, do you think he'll do Excuse it? me! Goes to show you that once anything becomes popular, it becomes fodder for corporate machines like Vought. The director mentions, Very green grass, very grounded. I want to take the audience and literally put them boom. Now, green grass has directed gritty, mostly handheld films like United 93 and Captain Phillips. These are interesting references, since last season featured a hijacking, and this episode takes place partly at sea. Hans Zimmer also gets a name drop. He's one of the go-to superhero composers after his work on the Nolan Batman trilogy, the Amazing Spider-Man series, and Zack Snyder's DCEU films. Stormfront dismisses his writing of female characters, saying, Either unknowable Hitchcock bitches or Michael Bay dolls. And Alfred Hitchcock had a notoriously antagonistic relationship with his female leads, and many of them were treated as the beautiful, unobtainable creature. Whereas Michael Bay is notorious for treating his leads as very obtainable eye candy. That's weird, I just wouldn't peg you for mechanical. Well, you know, I don't really brag. Then Compound V goes public and Vought is once again criticized by Congresswoman Victoria Newman, a gender swapped version of Vic the Veep from the comics. Also, according to Amazon's trivia page, Maeve's father has owned this Taco Bell franchise for decades. Sure, Amazon, that's why you put Taco Bell on the show, because it enhances the characters. You were not paid to do that at all. We also hear that Jonah Vogelbaum, the scientist who raised Homelander, is still alive, but now is disabled. Expect him to show up later in the series. There's quite a bit of suit product placement in the episode. Frenchie gives the boy a Homelander brand energy drink. And there's A-Train Frosted Flakes in this apartment and an Eagle Archer pinball machine in this apartment. We did also hear the name of the leader of the Church of the Collective. That's the Scientology-esque organization that's recruited the Deep. So you can expect to hear more from Alistair Adana in future episodes. And this episode continues the Cold War between Homelander and Vought. In the comics, this is a major plot point with Homelander setting a secret plan into motion that could nearly destroy the company. And because of spoilers, I will say no more. And by the way, Black Noir continues to be my favorite character on this show, from the way he sobbed at the Compound V revelation to a show of support for the Deep. And RIP Lucy the Whale. She was built from 3,500 pounds of materials, and it actually took five puppeteers to move her insides around. She will be missed. All right. Lucy. Homelander insults the Deep's Gill, and this is heartbreaking after the tender moment the Deep and his Gill shared in the last episode. You are so beautiful 
to me. And this is the episode where Stormfront reveals just how evil and depraved she actually is. In the comics, the character is actually one of the first soups and the literal Nazi created by the Germans during World War II. This Stormfront has a few indications that she might also be a fascist piece. Her earrings are in the shape of the SS symbol. She doesn't care about collateral damage and especially doesn't mind killing black residents of this apartment building. <laughs> And her ugly racial slur in this fight is actually from the comics, making me wonder if she's also a secret Nazi. GameSpot pointed out that Stormfront is the name of a neo-Nazi website, and it was originally hosted on a server called Liberty.net. So maybe Liberty could be Stormfront, and she just switches identities every few years, and Stormfront actually came from Nazi Germany. But there's another more likely possibility, though. This is your mom. Also interesting that the female's brother is wearing a Spuds McKenzie t-shirt. This party down master was the mascot for Bud Light in the 80s. So if it turns out that Liberty is the main threat, then the boy is the lesser threat, the Bud Light to her Budweiser, if you will. And finally, the charity handing out supplies at the end is Samaritan's Embrace. This is the bogus charity run by Ezekiel that delivered Compound V to hospitals across America. Well, that's all the Easter eggs and references that I found, but if you found any, let me know in the comments below. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.